It's Rob and Liz, his morning crew on his radio. And as you can see, we've got some great gentlemen there along with us this morning. It's Alex and Stephen Kendrick. You know them for movies like Facing the Giants, Fireproof, Overcomer, War Room, one we're going to be talking about in just a moment because it's Courageous Now, Courageous Legacy, and Show Me the Father. It is it is so good to see you, gentlemen. It's been such, seems like it's forever because of the pandemic that hit us in 2020. It is, but hey, great to be with you guys again. We have fond memories of actually being physically in the studio with yes. you. Yes, that's right. <laughs> and you, you've come to the premieres of a lot of our films, so... Uh, we've oh, had some man. good times over the years. We've had some phenomenal times. I- I'm very curious, Stephen, about how you handle with your pets in the lockdown. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on here, yeah. guys? <laughs> that's that's our dog, Pippa. That's exactly right. She has hilarious uh, ways of laying around her house. A lot of times she lays on her stomach and puts her feet back, and it looks like she's flying on our floor. So that's well, crazy kind of looks like that and it it appears to me that you've got her plugged in she's an apple product it seems like to me she has to have her airpods in (laughs) you gotta do hey when you're bored during a pandemic huh that's right (laughs) the kendrick brothers along with us this morning on his radio let me tell you alex your family just looks so beautiful I appreciate that. No, we just took that a week ago. So oh, wow. you got you guys are on the ball. Yeah, that was at our Thanksgiving uh, family dinner. And yeah, all our kids were home from college, our three oldest. So it was always good to be together. What was Thanksgiving like in your family? Uh, well, Thanksgiving's always good. You know, we do a lot of food. You know, Stephen is with his wife's family and our family. I'm with our family, my wife's family. And it's it's great, you know, because uh, most of us are in the same town. So that's, it makes it convenient. It's a blessing to be together. Oh, fun. Tell us about Anna. Oh, Anna. Well, she's now 21. And that is my, uh, a picture of her when she's probably 12. But yeah, she, she posted that. But man, Anna is fantastic. She's getting a a degree in psychology right now. She's about to be a senior at Lee University in Tennessee. So we're really, really grateful and proud of her. And she made the Dean's List? Is this right? What? Oh, yeah. Yeah, actually, my three oldest made the Dean's List. But yeah, yeah Anna's doing fantastic. And she is, uh, she, she's going to be, I think, on a platform of some sort. She her, her, her personality just explodes wherever she's at and, and uh, just an energy-giving person. So mm-hmm. uh, you, you, you may be talking to her one day. She's yeah, a go getter and she gets it uh, from you guys, right? Just doesn't fall I far think from so. the tree. Yeah. Where, I does, so, yeah. where does Joy get basketball from? Joy, man, Joy, uh, you know, I think that's a blessing of the Lord. We grew up playing in the driveway, but she she just loves the the joy of competition and 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 competing and and uh, has a good heart for the Lord, though. We make sure that the heart for God is above sports, but she just got a full ride scholarship to play basketball in college. She's currently a senior in high school, and so love watching her play. I'll be watching her tonight play a ball game. Wow. Yeah, I Alex, love Alex's daughter, Joy. Uh, her coach said after 20 something years of coaching, she has the best like chess mind on a on a court where she can step on assess the situation and know exactly what to do to overcome the the uh the opposition so she she thinks like a winner (laughs) not everybody has that either you might be able to play the game but you can't think through the strategy that goes behind it so that she's got both wow yeah you know thinking and as with anything you may have a skill set but a lot, so much of anything that we do is mental. So mm-hmm. if you can mentally get there, then you're you're already a, a poised to win. Steven, it seems like to me your kids are really getting into the uh, the producing and making the movies. They are. Uh, my son Cohen. We actually just had a shadow day where Joy and uh, Cohen came over here uh, as part of their schooling, and we spent a day walking through how we do filmmaking uh, with them and their friends. Uh, how we try to pray through all those decisions and honor the Lord. Uh, but my son Grant is actually at Lee University and he's taking uh, cinema classes there. So we're hoping and praying that our kids will be able to to continue to pick up the baton and make Christian films in the future. I don't think they're doing so bad, especially when I see this. This is great. In Albany, Georgia, reporting for Everyday News. My parents gave me and my brother for Christmas this bump bed. We love it. 
<laughs> wow. Oh, news reporting. Down I don't know everything. where you got that, Rob, but man, that's that's <laughs> reaching way back. Those were like facing the Giants days, I think. Right. Yeah, I'm telling you. Well, and, and there's one thing that I've noticed, too, about Alex, and there's some music that's in you, man. Uh, <laughs> I think you're about to play something, aren't you? Yeah. As a family, uh, we yeah, we, we love getting together once in a while. And I've, I, I have posted a couple things, but mm-hmm. yeah, our, our, our family is very musical. We love it. And it's somebody's always doing something in the house. Yeah, yeah. Alex gets out the capo, puts it on a ukulele, and jams out. Hey, hey. <laughs> Dude, you're in rhythm. I mean, right. you got it right and now. And I love you got the, the four face. count and everything. The face that goes along with it. That yeah, <clears throat> you got to get into it. Right. <laughs> I tell you, That's the Kendrick hilarious. brothers along with us is radio. It is Rob and Liz. I'm so excited about Show Me the Father. I mean, this is coming out and released digital this week. That's right. Today it is actually in stores. You can go to Walmart, pick up the two disc of Show Me the Father and Courageous Legacy. Uh, you can also order it on Amazon, and uh, you can digitally download it. However, you buy movies, you know whether that's Amazon, iTunes, Hulu, whatever. And it's in a bunch of languages. The subtitles, so that because we're thinking international impact, because this is a uh, a ministry impact film in in a big way. So we're excited Absolutely. about the release, and for people to get to be able to share it over Christmas with their friends. What are some of the stories you're hearing from this one in particular right now? Oh, man, it, it, uh, we could talk all day about that. But people watching mm-hmm. this film saying that I have a, a better understanding of my view of God as father than I ever did before, because we dive into uh, God specifically in the role of father, how much he loves us and that none of us had a perfect dad. And some of us had a painful relationship with our dad. But when you understand what God wants to be in your life, how much mm-hmm. he loves you and that role that he wants to fill himself, it changes everything. So show me the father, five powerful documentary stories that will tug at your heart. There's some amazing twists in there. And so honestly, people that watch it come away saying this was much more profound than I expected it to be. It was amazing to me to think that it was a decade ago. I had the opportunity to be on the set of Courageous. And here it is a decade later, the 10th anniversary, just released on digital as well with Courageous Legacy. Yes. Well, and Courageous Legacy is the best version of the film. We, we went back and re-edited the original movie, uh, recolored the whole thing, added in new scenes that people have not seen before, and then we shot a new ending where you can see where the officers are 10 years later. We're thinking mm. millions of young men have become dads over the last 10 years, and we want to reach... The, the next generation with a new version of Courageous. So both Show Me the Father and Courageous Legacy are coming out today. And uh, you can order those films and watch them with your family. And we hope you'll be blessed by both of them. And please uh, use them for ministry. Both of them are very mm-hmm. evangelistic. Both of them can bring encouragement and healing. Uh, Show Me the Father is it doesn't beat up dads. You know, you feel very loved by yeah. God at the end of that film. And there's people that are depressed that are being ministered to by it. Uh, we've heard some amazing stories of people watching the film and just ready to give their lives to Christ or ready to surrender to Christ after watching it. So they're fun to watch. They're entertaining. They're emotional roller coasters. And right now, with so much going on that's a discouragement to people, we're grateful that these movies hopefully will be a huge shot in the arm for the body of Christ. And we yeah, are grateful I, for all that you do as well. I mean, I'm kind of fangirling over here a little bit. You know, my <laughs> boys were uh, eight and 10 respectively when Courageous came out. And now, you know, we're not at that stage yet, but it's going to be in the next couple of years. And just what you've provided, um, I'm very grateful. Well, we're, we're so they're about to step into manhood. And mm-hmm. so just to have um, a picture, especially in today's culture, mm-hmm. of what that can look like to honor the Lord, even through struggles and your own trials, to honor God and seek his face as you step into manhood. Man, do we need a generation of young men that will embrace mm-hmm. biblical manhood in this culture? It's so needed right now. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. What's coming up next? Because I know there's got to be something ready to go. Well, uh, Show Me the Father is in Brazil. It just got released in theaters in Brazil. We're excited about that. And all the translation languages that are coming on the DVD, there's probably like 
15 to 20 languages. So the international impact is about to begin. We're praying through that. And we put special features on the Show Me the Father disc that are ministry impact features. So you see more of the backstory between Sherman uh, Smith and Dylan McCullough. There's a whole mentorship video on here. And then mm. there's a video on how to receive a blessing from God and how to give a blessing to your children. Because when people watch Show Me the Father and they're seeing our dad give us a formal blessing and what that looks like, so many men, in fact, I would say probably 95% plus of men have never received a father's blessing. They don't mm. even know what that is or what that looks like. So we put on the disc and the special features how to receive one and how to give one to your own children. So we're very mm. excited about that. And then in addition to that, we're editing a film that we shot earlier yeah. this year that we hope to release probably August, September next so, year. So we have already shot our next film. <laughs> I know uh, it, yeah. <laughs> should we tell them the title or should we just kind of no, leave it hanging? No, yes, no. no, tell us, tell us, tell oh. us. No, can't tell. What a can't tease. Tell you can't do that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's okay, but we know there's something on the horizon. Yes, yes. 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 The, and it's always going to be good and always ministry-focused and life-changing. That's what I love about the Kendrick Brothers. Thank you, Stephen and Alex, for spending time with us today. God bless you yeah. guys. Good to talk to you. Thank you. You guys. too. Take care. Rob and Liz, his morning crew. Okay, I need a game show theme. Oh, I've got one. So there's a new host of Jeopardy. Dun, dun, dun. That's not the right way. No, it's the Price is Right. I, I couldn't think what that was. The only one I got. Right. No, I have a, I have another game show. Hold on. Okay. So there's a new host of Jeopardy, kinda. What is this? Oh, this is a weird throwback to the match game. Oh my goodness. I don't even yeah. know this one. I knew yeah. the last one. You got anything else? You have else? never seen the match game? I don't think I ever watched it. Okay. Ever. I'm no. going to pull one up on YouTube for her so she can see what the match okay, game is. Uh, okay. Do Back to this to? one, because I don't have the other one. So there's a new host of Jeopardy. Sorry. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm going to stop that. I'm going to put it back. Okay, so there's, there's a new host of Jeopardy. <laughs> Is there? Yeah, two of them, as a matter of fact. So it's the young lady from, uh, what is it, Big Bang Theory? Big Bang Theory. I don't know. I never know how to say her name. Maya Bialik. That lady. Yeah. Yeah. Who and, used to be Blossom. And the, Yeah, I remember. That's yeah. a throwback. Yeah. Okay, hold on. Oh. Da, da, da. So there's a new host of Jeopardy, and it's you Kenning I mean? Jennings. Kenny, Ken Jennings. Ken Jennings, who was the he was the biggest winner ever, right? Yeah. No one ever surpassed him. I don't. So they're going to share the responsibilities, which they have been for a while, and I guess it's working for them. So, so. it's official. So I don't know if you heard. Da, 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 da. There's a new host of Jeopardy. Da, 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 da. <laughs> there's two people. Wait, shouldn't we be like? Doo, 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 doo. No. I like this a lot better. Hold on. No. So, this is like Hawaii a, 5 or something. There's a new host of Jeopardy. Rob and Liz. His morning crew. Chelsea, just like most little girls, dream about their wedding day and walking down the aisle. But when she was a senior in high school, she was in a really bad car accident, um, hit by a drunk driver. She was a passenger in a car and ended up being paralyzed from the waist down. Oh, no. She even thought, you know, will I ever meet that special person? But um, earlier this year, she did. She met Jay, and they had a fairly quick romance as far as getting engaged pretty, pretty soon. Um, um, and she'd never thought once she was in a wheelchair after that accident that she would be able to walk down the aisle. Six months ago, she said, I'm going to do my best. It's going to be a surprise. Not going to tell him. Not going to tell anybody except my mom and dad. Right. And I'm going to practice and I'm going to do my best to walk down the aisle. So the wedding just happened. She had a walker that was completely decked out for the wedding. I mean, the ribbons and all, you know. Oh, come on. Dad helped her down the aisle. The uh, pastor at the end of the aisle with the groom would not allow her groom to turn around. He wanted it to be a total surprise until she got to that door and started walking down the aisle. That's so great. He turned around and just basically hit his knees, like just melted at seeing his future wife walk toward him that that, that afternoon. That is so beautiful. Isn't I love it? that. 
I, I love that that was a surprise. They kept it a surprise for six months. He had no idea she was practicing. That, that, that meant that she was going through a lot of rehabilitation and right. a lot of therapy for to get that kind of help to do that. Because if she's paralyzed the waist down. Yes. And, and hard work, determination that she had. She had an end goal. She saw it and she worked for it every single day. Rob and Liz, his morning crew. Molly's here at 800-447-7234. Hey, Molly, what's going on this morning? I was sick and coughing, and so I raced to MUSC yesterday morning in Charleston and praying, and I had flashbacks from 16 years ago, and they called me and said, Molly, MUSC is waiting on you. Um, I was diagnosed with leukemia. I've been in remission for 16 years. I heard about little Cameron. Uh, the peace of the Lord came over me driving yesterday morning at 1.30, not knowing what was wrong with me. I was scared, but I just prayed to Jesus, just take the will. All my results came back. I'm fine. There's nothing major wrong with me. Uh, I was just, just, I just gave it to him. I'm just praying for Cameron and his family. And the peace of Jesus be with them. Oh, thank you, Molly. And it's a relief to know that you're going to be okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you're talking about little Cameron, 18 months old, who is having a biopsy today. They found a lump, and so his family is uh, either at the hospital now or on their way to have that biopsy. Yeah, so So thank you for praying. His name is Cameron, and we were just praying for him about uh, 10 minutes ago. And Molly, we rejoice with you, and thanks for praying for that little guy. Rob and Liz, his morning crew. I love this neighbor helping neighbor story. Like, here's Justin. All of a sudden, two packages off his front porch. He's like, i got to stop this. So he said, hey, listen, 500 bucks if you can catch the thieves. Mm-hmm. So Cody, who's 14 years old, goes, I got an idea, and put those Apple key tags in a box, mm-hmm. put it out on the same porch. Mm-hmm. Somebody stole it. He called the cops and said, hey, guess what? Somebody stole this box, and I know where they are because I'm tracking them on my iPhone right now. They caught the porch pirates, and now they're taken care of and he's 14 but he yeah you know i think the reward was something that you know may have inspired him but also he wanted to help his neighbor and help oh. his family as well liz mentioned a reward i didn't say anything about it oh yeah, i did 500 buck reward yeah. yeah so boom you get the 500 bucks caught the porch pirates and it cost him 30 dollars because of the uh, apple key tag thing well, sure. he put in the boxes uh, a bad investment not at all way to go and then i started thinking about how neighbors just help out neighbors yeah. like that i don't know if you have a story of something that you've heard the neighbor do for somebody else but we'd love to hear from you today rob and liz his morning crew yeah hearing these stories about neighbors that help neighbors teresa is here at 800-447-7234 what happened teresa years ago we were moving from our home in indiana to come out here and we had actually moved before we sold our house. The buyers wanted certain planks on the wood siding painted, and it was very particular, and here we are, a thousand miles away, and no ability to do it. And I happened to be talking to my neighbor and told her, I'm like, we're gonna have to figure out how to come back to Indiana and take care of this. And she's like, nope, we got it. And her husband went down after work and literally went in our garage, dug out the paint, painted the entire wood siding of our house just so we could go ahead and finish closing the the house. How amazing is that? Now, hopefully you moved your neighbors next door to you (laughs) where you are now (laughs) so you can keep them. We are still trying, still trying, but we are still close. And every time we visit the areas, we, we stop and see each other and, but that has stayed with me, and that was probably 20 years ago. But didn't even hesitate. Just went down there and did it and wouldn't take a dime for it. Rob and Liz, his morning crew. It seems that in Florida, Georgia, Alabama, in Louisiana, in South Carolina, when it comes to movies of the 90s, when it comes to Christmas, it's Home Alone. Absolutely. Yeah, and here's the thing. North Carolina is jingle all the way. Which I don't see. I like that movie, but I didn't know it was as universal uh, as Home Alone. No, that's Paramount. It's Robin Liz, (laughs) his morning crew on his radio. Wow. So um, I love Home Alone. I would say, though, my favorites are like Miracle on 34th and probably The Grinch if you're going to the 90s. Which one? The Grinch, the Jim Carrey. That was the 90s? 
Was you it? sure? Maybe it was the 2000s. Yeah, that was 2018. They all run together, you know. Well, no, it was not <laughs> three years ago. Um, but I do like the original Dr. Seuss animated version, but that was like, seems like forever ago. Why? Why do I like that one? Yeah, why? I, I guess it's just the nostalgia of it, the memories of, mm -hmm. you know, when I was a little kid watching it, because we didn't have the, the updated Jim Carrey version. We didn't have Home Alone, that kind of thing, okay. yet. So, yeah, I think that's why. But the little drummer boy, that's a claymation one. Mm -hmm. And my husband hates claymation. So when I watch that one, I have to watch it separately from him. So that means Joey does not like Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Does not at all. Doesn't like, Santa oh, what Claus are the other ones? Santa Claus is coming to town. Yeah, doesn't like that one. The Year Without a Santa Claus, which is honestly one of the best because it has the heat miser in it and the freeze miser. Oh, you like it for the songs. I'm Mr. See? Heat Miser. I'm Mr. Sun. I, whoa. I, I know. I get like a little. <laughs> she got a little Mr. groove Heat going. Miser. Rob and Liz. His morning crew. It's really hard to get some really good sleep. And if you struggle, like millions of others are struggling, Liz has the answer for you. She's going to be able to help you out in this. It's Rob and Liz, his radio. Um, if you have toddlers or you were ever a toddler, there are some things that you can do to help get a good night's sleep. And uh, they're saying as adults, we can follow some of these um, tips, I guess, to help us fall asleep at night. What's toddlers got to do with this? Because toddlers, it, a parent of a toddler, you remember, let's say when Spencer was little, right? When he was a little baby boy. Some of the things you or Amy would do to help him kind of wind down and get ready for bed. Maybe it was a bath like a warm bath, and then lotion. You'd put lotion on his, his little feet and his little hands and massage it in, and it kind of winds them down. I really thought you were going to let us know how we can get a better night's sleep. You're talking about our kids now. No, but, but that's okay. No, they no. do. Hold up. I totally misinterpreted. No, not what at all. What do you mean? You take those practices mm -hmm. and we do it as adults. So if you're trying to wind down, you have a hard time going to sleep, they say take a warm bath or a I'm hot not bath. taking some bubble bath. Why? A bubble bath is awesome. No, I, I cannot sit in a tub surrounded by candles. Why? And bubbles. Have you ever tried it? No. Why? But, but why? No. So it helps you just kind of relax and yeah. wind down. And then another thing they say to put lotion on your arms, on your legs, and really pay attention to like your fingers and your toes. Do you see my arms? Yeah. Look at how hairy they are. <laughs> you know, lotion. You want me to put lotion on this? Yes. Rob and Liz. His morning crew. Wow. They're going to be saving lives now. Okay. His morning crew with Rob and Liz. His radio. She's talking about, and I'll tell you why she's freaking just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Because these are cockroaches that are literally saving lives now. Oh. They equip them with backpacks. And, and they, they first used this in Japan back in 2011 when they had the big earthquake. Mm -hmm. So they deployed the cockroaches in to go save lives and find victims. There's nothing gross about this. I mean, I, they're I, robots. I mean, what's gross about a robot? They just call them a cockroach. Oh, the cockroach is a robot? Yes. Oh, because I'm like, how do you train a cockroach? Like, what is happening here? Well, I'm sure people have. I don't know, but these are cyborg. Okay. Yeah. I and feel so, a little better about that. <laughs> since they use this technology, they're like, let's really work better on this. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, they look like little crawly cockroaches mm. and they have little backpacks on them. And then like in the rubble of an earthquake or some kind of natural disaster where you can't get into to find somebody who was trapped and needs to be saved. Right. They, they're they putting in these cockroaches and <laughs> I should just call them cyborgs. They put in these little Thanks. crawling cyborgs because <laughs> she's like crawling in her own skin. <laughs> like, Every time I say that, she's like... Nya. And so, and then they go in and they can detect there's human life right here and then puts a signal back up where the people are and they can go and they can save lives. So, well, that's pretty awesome. Why could they not make them like kittens? It, what? Kittens. They're too big or to get in and crawl around in between hopper? those grasshopper. Why not? They're a too noisy. Well, they're not going to be playing the violin. I mean, they're not going to. Yeah, and then, and then their whole. <laughs> all right. 